As much as, you know, I'm a, I'm a normal politician, I love a standing ovation, but you guys didn't come here to clap, you came here to hear from me, and uh, I just want to say a few things. Now, first of all, we have, um, we have some press in the background for the next 10 minutes here, so I have to be careful here. I don't want to give anything away for what I'm going to say tonight. I joke with the president that, uh, you know, I'm very excited about this evening, and uh, I don't plan to screw it up, but if I do, it's too late. He made the pick, right? It's official now. <laughs> We're going to get out there and try to fire up the crowd tonight and make the case, a very easy case to make, but an important case to make, that we have got to reelect President Donald J. Trump to the White House, right? <laughs> now, what I'll do here is talk a little bit about, about what is at stake in this election. I'll talk a little bit about what I'm going to try uh, to do as his, as his running mate. And I'll talk a little bit about why the Biden presidency has been just a has been such a complete failure. But what I'll, I'll first what, what I'll do after my remarks actually is is try to take some photos and hang out. If you've got anything you want me to sign, uh, you, you guys are going to hear me speak tonight for a much longer time than you're going to hear me speak today. And I'd like to get and actually visit with you a little bit. So uh, hopefully you're ready because uh, I, I'd love to just talk with people and uh, answer some questions and take some photos. But you know I. I I keep on thinking to myself, what, what's the best way, and this is part of what I've been going through as I think about what I'm going to say tonight, what is the best way to articulate why it is that re-electing President Trump is so important? And there are all these different sort of spins that you could take on it. You know, one is you could say, with uh, apologies to our friends back there, the media has lied more aggressively and slanderously about a guy... And he keeps on coming through it. He keeps on persevering. He keeps on fighting. President Trump has taken everything that they've thrown at him, and he's come out stronger, and the country has come out better for his service. We should be grateful to him, and I know that all of us in this room absolutely are. But, you know, it, it's, it's the way that we saw that, the contrast between the lie that the media tells about President Trump and the man that all of us actually know, of course, we saw it in really, really stark definition on Saturday. Because I, I'm sure that all of you had a similar reaction to me. You see the video, your friends start telling you that, oh, oh my God, they just shot the president. And then when I first saw the clip, I was worried. You know, you saw him go down, and I didn't know what was going on afterwards. I was so terrified that we had just lost a great president, but it would be an unbelievably terrible thing for our country in that moment in time. I was just so, so afraid for him and so afraid for our country. And then, of course, he stands up a minute later after they shot him. They literally shot him. And he raises his fist in the air and he says, fight, fight, fight. He fires up the crowd. But this is where the media was really dishonest, and I think they really miss what the man is made of because after he literally got shot, came within millimeters of losing his life in the service of this country, what did he do? I remember what I did. I was pissed. I was, as soon as I knew he was okay, I felt relief, and then I was like, I cannot believe an assassin tried to take down the President of the United States. I was mad about it. Was he mad and angry? He called for national unity. He called for calm. He showed leadership, my friends, that the media keeps on saying they want somebody to tone down the temperature. Well, Donald Trump got shot, and he toned down the temperature. That's what a real leader does. You know, there, there's another spin on, on the contrast, again, between Joe Biden and Donald Trump that I think it's, it's important to take on. You know, President Trump, obviously, is one of the most successful real estate executives in the, in the history of our country. Of course, the Trump name became synonymous uh, with, with luxury and with beauty in the real estate world. And Joe Biden, of course, likes to pretend that he's just Scranton Joe. Though I don't think Joe Biden knows much about what he is or isn't these days. But, you know... The guy who actually connects with working people in this country is not fake Scranton Joe, it's real President Donald Trump. Because they know, <laughs> because they know that he has their best interests at heart. He know, they know that when he was president for four years, 
groceries and gas and energy and housing were actually affordable to a normal person in this country. And after four years of the Biden administration, the basic trappings of a good middle class life have become less and less attainable. In my home state of Ohio, the average Ohio family is about $10,000 poorer than they were four years ago. And of course, Ronald Reagan famously asked in a great debate, I think it, it was Jimmy Carter, he said, were you, are, are you better off, he asked the American people in a debate with Jimmy Carter, I should say, are you better off than you were four years ago? And I wasn't alive when he asked that question, but I know millions of Ohio families who would answer that question with a resounding no. And if you asked the opposite question, were you better off in 2019 and 2020 than you were in 2016, those same exact families would say, absolutely yes. It is time to go back to the leadership of Donald Trump. It is time to get rid of the corrupt Biden-Harris regime that has broken this country, that has ruined its reputation in the world, and most importantly, has made a basic middle-class life less affordable for our citizens. Let's get rid of them, and let's bring Donald Trump back to the White House.